They came in numbers, women from all walks of life. At least 20 of them publicly shaved their hair. Some of these ladies are cancer victors, others undergoing cancer treatment, and others here to support a loved one diagnosed with cancer. I've lost so many people to cancer, my grandparents on both sides, and recently my uncle. I can barely make a change. Cancer is killing so many people. So by cutting my hair, like I'm showing a sign I can sacrifice uh, my womanhood. I was diagnosed with cancer together with my mother at the same time. We went to the theater. We were operated on. But fortunately, mine had not spread. But hers, she lost her breasts and she's actually going through chemo as we talk. She's in my house. She has lost her hair. So I felt touched when I heard that there was such an occasion, I said I'll be the first to have it done. So that when my mother sees me in the evening, I'll tell her I'm in support of what you're going through. I've decided to shave my hair because of my sister. She, uh, like two weeks ago, she has been suffering from cancer, the neck cancer. Chemotherapy causes hair loss, and by shaving their hair, these ladies were sending a bold message that they are in solidarity with cancer patients who lose hair during treatment. I shaved my hair today because my friend's mom is a cancer survivor. The message I'm sending to Kenyans and the world indeed is that whatever God has given you freely, without paying for anything, just give it freely. Because there's a person, there's another person who needs it more than how you need it. With recent reports that cancer is emerging as the leading cause of death in the country, the Kenya Cancer Association is lobbying for the prioritization of cancer awareness programs in all relevant sectors. Sadly, most cancer cases are diagnosed at late stages when very little can be achieved with therapeutic intervention. What you see on my head is the hair that came after. I lost it clean shaven. Get checked. Know yourself. If you find anything odd on your breast or on your body, for that matter, you should go to the uh, to seek medical advice. When Jerry was diagnosed with breast cancer, her first reaction was that it was a death sentence. But today, six years later, she's cancer free. When I went to the doctor's room, he was very inquisitive. He kept asking me to tell him about my family history. Was there any history of cancer? It, my grandmother and my grandfather had cancer, but I found myself denying it because I thought maybe this is what would confirm for him that I had cancer. So after a lot of talking, it, he was really inquisitive. He actually told me that I had cancer. That night when I went home, I remember I cried the whole night. I wrote a eulogy saying that I knew I would die especially if I started doing the chemotherapy. Jerry advocates for regular screening and encourages women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer not to give up the fight. I actually gave up because when I went to have my fourth cycle, I even walked out of the doctor's room and told the doctor, even you today, you can have that chemotherapy. So when I went home, my friends came back again. They talked to me, they encouraged me, and they told me there was no point of giving up because I was already halfway. I had only two, two more cycles to go. So the following day, I went back for chemotherapy, to do the chemotherapy. And the nurse I found there was very friendly. She introduced me to a cancer support group where there are so many women who meet every first Thursday of the month in Aga Khan. They all suffer from cancer. So they actually encouraged me because we've all gone through the same experience. And they give you the practical information on how to deal with each and every side effect. Don Jerry did not lose a breast through surgery. She says for her, the fear of losing a breast, as is the case with most cancer victims, was real. And the fact that you don't have a balanced chest, because you see most of them can't afford the prosthesis, so they end up fixing cotton wool inside the sock or even some pieces of clothes. They see you can bend, it, it actually falls down. So I think most women look at it as an embarrassment. The cancer victor says the government and relevant sectors should look into the provision of support centers to help create awareness and raise funds for those who cannot access cancer screening and treatment facilities. If it's the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy, the surgery, uh, I don't think every average Kenyan can be able to afford that. Because like on my side, I had to do a small fundraising so that I was able to actually get the treatment in Kenya. The hair auction at the village market was the first of its kind in the country. The hair was auctioned and the proceeds will be used to buy breast prosthesis for women who have lost a breast in surgery known as mastectomy. Cancer is not a death warrant. If it's diagnosed early, 
you don't have to go through many troubles like chemo and radiotherapies and all that. Like I did, actually in July, I was operated on in July and I'm back to the office. So I thought immediately you're diagnosed with cancer, it will only take you a few months. When you start doing the chemotherapy, that's what everyone has in mind. That immediately you start doing chemotherapy, you're gone. But in, I found it was different because I managed to meet a group of survivors who survived it for 20 years and they still tell their stories up to date. For the women in this room who have fought cancer and continue to fight it, their message was bold and clear. Cancer is not a death sentence. It can be fought and will continue to be fought.